Hello my friends, I'm Clover, and today we are solving a Windoku from August 7th, 2024 from the Gas Channel. Um, this is day 7 of our August 2024 variant guessing game, so congratulations to those of you who guessed we'd be having a Windoku today. Get your guesses in. Um, I guess by the time this video is published, it's a little too late to guess what the next day's variant is going to be, but get your guesses in now for the 9th. Um, <laughs> And this is also kind of a fun puzzle. Let me walk you through the rules. And then I'm going to solve this in a little bit of a different way from usual, and I'll explain in a moment. So we have normal Sudoku rules. So we're placing the digits 1 through 9, once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. And then in the Windoku variant, we also have these four additional 3x3 three three regions that are kind of outlined in dotted lines elsewhere in the grid that kind of form this window pane shape. And the rule for these is that you also place the digits one through nine once each in each of these four regions without any repeats. But here's the thing about Windoku. So there are two ways to solve this puzzle and I have solved it both ways. In testing, it took me, I think, two minutes longer to solve it kind of the normal standard just looking for what digit to place next kind of way and then when i solved it a second time uh, not really remembering what the solve looked like but just trying to use this trick that i'm about to show you i was about two minutes faster and so if you want to learn to be more efficient solving puzzles like this one this is the trick so the way this works is each of these regions, and I'm going to just color two of them for now. We're going to color them orange. Each of these regions is a set of one through nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you compare that to these three columns, for example, in each of these columns, we have a set of one through nine. So between these three columns, we have three full sets of the digits one through nine. And then in these two orange regions, we have a total of two full sets of the digits one through nine. So in these three columns, two of their three sets are contained in these two orange regions. So if we were to remove those orange regions from the columns because they fully overlap, we'd be left with just these cells. And if we take three sets of one through nine and we remove two sets of one through nine, what we end up with is one set of one through nine. And so these pink cells or purple cells, depending on your, uh, your monitor's color settings, form a single set of the digits one through nine. And we already have, courtesy of Philip, seven of those nine digits. We have everything except five and eight, so we just need to place a five and an eight into those cells. We can do the exact same thing over here. Here we're missing only three digits, two, five, and eight, and I'm going to put those in those cells. That can't be a two, that can't be an eight, and that can't be a two, and that actually gives me a two. We can do the exact same thing horizontally as well. For the same exact reason, if we consider these two regions versus the three rows that I kind of started highlighting in green there, we get one set of one through nine in these cells. And so these missing digits from that set of one through nine are four and five. And because we have a four in this region, we can place our five. And finally in these, we're missing three cells or three digits, three empty cells. And those are going to consist of one, five, and what's the last one? One, three, and five. That's not a one. That's not a five. That is not a three. And that's where we're at. We can also do one more thing that's kind of fun. A little bonus. I didn't end up using it while I was initially solving this puzzle. Maybe I'll use it in this walkthrough. But if you look at just the cells that I've completely left out, what we've done is we've accounted for one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight sets of one through nine in total. So we've accounted for eight of them. In the full puzzle, there are exactly nine of them. 
And so the missing cells must make up that ninth set of the digits one through nine. So if we were to highlight these cells, that red group is also a set of the digits one through nine, exactly. We don't have any digits in those cells given, so that's probably not going to be our starting place, but that can be really useful in Wendoku puzzles. Well, let's take what we've got here. So I'm looking at this bottom row because I've been given now a 5-8 pair that looks useful. The only digits I still need to place here are 1, 2, and 3 to finish this row. I have a 1 and 2 in this column already, so let's place a 3 here, a 1 here because of the 2 there, and then a 2 here. And that will resolve some digits. I get a 3 and a 5 there. That 5 fixes my 5-8 pair, which gives me both this digit and that digit. Now if I consider this column, I only have two digits left to place here. I need to place a 6 and a 9, and I'm going to put them in those two spots. In this row, I just need to place a 7 and an 8, and they'll go in those two spots. And in this column, I need a 1 and a 5, and my 5 will have to go here, and my 1 will go here. And then my last digit in the middle, outside of the windows, is going to go in this cell, and that will be a 4. And that's kind of fun, because we have been able to start the puzzle by finishing the entire grid outside of the windows. So now I'm going to look for hiddens in the window regions. Specifically, I'm going to look for hiddens in these 2x2 two two corner areas. This is something that I've done before in these walkthroughs. I see two 5s here, which see these cells, so that will be a 5. I see a 4 here, which sees those cells, so that has to be my 4. I still need to place a 3 and a 7, and they will go in those two positions because of the 7 here. Up here, I need 1, 2, 3, and 8. I see two 8s, so 8 must go there. And those will be 1, 2, and 3. My 2 eliminates 2 from those cells. My 3 eliminates 3 from that cell, and that is a 1 and a 3. Here I need 1, 4, 6, and 7. I have two 1s right here. That'll be my 1. And I need to place 4, 6, and 7. And I can't quite do that yet. Here I need 3, 6, 8, and 9. I have two 3s that see these cells, so there's my 3. And I need to place 6, 8, and 9. Now, let's look at these edge regions. So here in this region, to finish the region, I'm going to need 1, 2, 6, and 9. So the 2 and 9 will go in these cells to finish this row, there and there. And then the 1 and 6 will go in those positions. Now, to finish this Windoku region, I need three more digits. I need 4, 5, and 7. This one can't be 4 or 7 because those appear in the column already. So these will be 4 and 7, and that makes these two cells a 5 and a 9, which resolve. Now if we look at this window for region, we have 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9, so we still need 2, 3, and 8. The 3 can only go there, 2 can only go there, and 8 must go there. That 8 finally resolves this, which is going to bounce back and let us finish everything that we've done so far. Our last cell in this row is a 4, and our last cell in this row is a 5. In this row, we still need 1, 2, and 7. The 7 can only go here because of the 7 in the region. That's a 2 and a 1. Our last digit in this region will be an 8, and these digits will be a 6 and a 9. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's Windoku for August 7th. Hope you enjoyed that one. Solve it yourself with the link in the description below this video. And I will see you next time. Have a good one.